Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Oh, let's close that. I am broadcasting to you live from my bathroom because it is the only room in my house that was um, least messy enough that I felt like I could broadcast without being horrifically embarrassed. <laughs> True, true story. Um, I am having a glass of wine. Um, even though I am a little sick, I'm on my fourth stomach flu in three months. I do not recommend it. It is fabulous for fast weight loss, though. <laughs> Terrible thing to say. Uh, Bubba is with me because he is... We're, we're trying the microphone again because he is beyond clingy. Okay, today, got my notes. We are going to talk about lactose intolerance in babies. Is it a real thing? What can you do about it? Everything you need to know. So very first, very first, we're going to get some nerd trivia out of the way to clarify some terms about how we talk about lactose intolerance. It's going to make you the smartest mom on the playground, but it's also going to make you be able to have um, a very medical conversation with your doctor if you think your baby is suffering from this. So we've all heard of lactose, which is the sugar in breast milk or the carbohydrate. Here's your nerd tip. Anytime you have an OS, O-S-E suffix on a word, that's a sugar or a very simple carbohydrate. So lactose is milk sugar, sucrose, whoa. Line. Sucrose is table sugar. Maltose is um, two glucoses stuck together. It's a sugar in beer, malt liquor. Um, and then those sugars, the way that they are digested so we can absorb them in the intestine is by enzymes. We're back. Anytime, sorry, the connection's bad. That is the enzyme that digests that sugar. So lactase is an enzyme. Think Pac-Man. Just takes a little lactose, chops it in half then you can absorb the carbohydrate. So lactase digests lactose. Sucrase digests sucrose. Maltase digests maltose. You get it. Um, so now you can meet, read medical literature and totally know what they're talking about. So um, that's the stuff you need to know to talk about baby lactose intolerance. So first, this is probably what your doctor heard you or you've read on any blog, that all babies, all mammals are born with the ability to digest lactose. This is true. Um, there's a very, very rare genetic disorder in which the baby cannot digest lactose. Um, you know this right away. They're tested. They fail to thrive. Um, they will die if no medical intervention. So this is not you. However, um, that's a true lactase problem. Um, when we're talking about lactose intolerance, we all know what that's like in an adult, but all babies should have the ability to digest lactose because they have functioning lactase in their intestines. Some adults lose lactase in their intestine, which is why some adults develop lactose intolerance because they can't digest it. All babies have lactase. So, and I used to be one of these really hardcore militant nutritionists that would say, and I quote, Oh, this mom thinks her baby's got a lactose problem, but it's something else, and she just doesn't have the education to know what she's talking about. Well, A, how insulting is that to mothers? <laughs> and B, I have just been schooled over the years of working with moms who truly know their babies best. I have changed my tune, um, and I, I really do believe that some babies do have a, a little bit of problem digesting all of the lactose in breast milk or formula so that they do develop symptoms. So um, always trust your intuition, but that might be the spiel that you get from your doctor and they are right that all babies can digest lactose because um, they're tested, we know. And so they may write off your perception of symptoms in your baby is coming from something else. So with that said, just check my notes to be sure I don't miss anything. Symptoms of lactose intolerance in a baby um, or like symptoms of lactose intolerance in an adult that we see maybe in a baby that we think is lactose, you know what they are. Gas, bloating, like it's the dreaded gas, right? That they wake up in the middle of the night. Gas, bloating, um, funky stool, and you know, just seeming like GI distress. A lot of people immediately want to attribute that to lactose intolerance because they can relate. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, you look at a baby, you're like, I, I feel you, kid. I feel that exact same way after I eat ice cream. So I will say, sometimes, maybe usually, 
if it's in a baby it's a, and a formula-fed baby, even a breastfed baby, it's more likely to be the protein source because babies are mammals and are primed to be able to digest lactose. And there's so much in proteins, especially in formula, that can really... Sorry about the reconnection problems. Um, so I've got a lot of other materials and videos. I'm not going to go about how to decide if it's protein and what in the protein. I am going to say, if you have gone through that process and you you are the expert on your own baby, if you are convinced that it is the lactose that is a problem, let's work with it. Um, and here's what I would suggest that you do. So I'm going to go through the biology of how infants digest Vaughn is trying to climb into the tub. He's too small. I can't get in there yet, but I've only got like three more months. <laughs> um, here's what you need to know about the biology of infant intestines so that you can um, try some things to try to help your baby digest this load of lactose that comes in every bottle. So lactase, that enzyme, the expression of that enzyme and the activity, so basically how this enzyme functions, increases throughout the fetal life and it so at term. Um, I'm sorry about the connection. Uh, so that means if your baby was born early at all, even like 38, 39 weeks, so still term but not the full 40 weeks, they may not have as robust ability to digest lactose as an older baby. I would also apply this. We know that the range on what's normal for any babies is huge. Maybe your baby's just got, you know, they, they have normal healthy intestines, but their lactase is just on the slower curve of normal of like getting really ramped up. So lactase expression or an activity increases in utero and then it continues to increase after birth as the intestines are exposed to more and more lactose. So again, if your baby's intestines are just on a little bit of the slow end of normal, I do think that you could be seeing some symptoms of lactose intolerance, or basically it's just more lactose than this lactase can handle, and that leads to all that bloating. Um, so who's at risk f for this? Preemies, of course. If you have a preemie, you know, all my stuff that I put out there is for healthy term babies. Preemies are at a severe risk for this. They have specialty formulas. Like, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to see the other end of my bathroom. Um, babies that are born a little bit early but still term, I think are at risk for having a little bit of a slower lactase ability. And then um, really, this is kind of sad to say, but I think any baby who's exclusively fed formula might be more of a, at risk for this. And this is because formula-fed babies develop a very different microbiome or all those healthy bugs in the gut than breastfed babies. So all those bugs... Um, some digest lactose and help out. Some digest lactose and make a lot of gas, which is probably not the best. Anyway, so they, the bugs in their gut are, are contributing in a very different way than a breastfed baby. Also, breast milk is full of all kinds of molecules, enzymes, you name it, that help the baby digest the food. So formula-fed babies aren't getting that. So I think breast or excuse me formula fed babies are probably at increased risk for developing these lactose intolerant symptoms or or for I hate the word intolerance because it makes it sound like your baby can't do its job of digesting he can he's a rock star but his little gut just might be overwhelmed with all the lactose that's coming in so I think formula fed babies are at risk um, for having this issue too so Let's not end on that depressing note. So if you think you've got this going on with your kiddo and they just have, you, you know, you're pretty sure it's the lactose and not the protein, um, here's the take-homes of what I think you should do. One, like I said, to really try to be sure it's not the protein because we've got a lot more, there's a lot more options with tweaking protein and formula. So if we can solve the problem that way, it's easier. So once you've eliminated the protein and you're really sure that it's the lactose, there are a bunch of lactose-reduced formulas on the market. The way you're going to know that they're lactose-reduced is you're going to see some other carbohydrate, which is going to be a sugar, in the list of ingredients. Um, the good news is, just like there's lactase in the gut, there's maltase and there's sucrase, and they are like gangbuster enzymes. So your baby's intestines are going to be able to digest these sugars, no problem, guaranteed. So look for things you might see are um, brown rice syrup, glucose syrup, glucose syrup solids, corn syrup, 
maltodextrin. I've got a blog on my website that lists all the possible versions. So that's going to be a lactose reduced formula, and that might give your little Bubba's intestines just a little bit of a break they need um, to get rid of some of that bloating. So the only other problem, which meh, it's not a true problem, is that most partially hydrolyzed proteins formulas also have reduced lactose. So if you try one and it works, then you have no idea if it was really the protein or the lactose, which is a, only a problem for nerd science parents. Um, if you're just a normal parent, like the problem is solved. What do you care? That's awesome. You found a formula that works. Um, but that is something that makes it really hard to figure out exactly what the problem was. Okay, so try a reduced lactose formula. If you can, try to, just as just a personal advice, try to pick one that has glucose-based sugars added. So basically, you don't want to see the word sugar or sucrose on the label, if you can avoid it. Um, I just think that's a slightly healthier choice. If you have a formula with sugar in it and it's working for you, go for it, girl. Stick with it. Okay. And... The next thing that I think you should try is to introduce a probiotic. Like I said, I think there's three different ways a probiotic might be able to help here. One is probiotics sometimes can just help improve overall intestinal health. So if the baby's intestines have been really irritated, healthy bacteria can help um, those intestinal cells to heal faster and get back to functioning more normally. So if that was the original problem, sometimes they can help speed up that healing process. Um, and like I said, some good bacteria can help digest the lactose, kind of help the intestines do their work. And then also some of those good bacteria are going to displace some of the quote unquote bad bacteria that are making so much excess gas. So a uh, probiotic might really help. I've got a lot of info on my site about how to add a probiotic gently. I'd love if you think it's a lactose problem to work up to a quote unquote broad spectrum probiotic, which just means it's got a bunch of different bacteria in it. And then we'd be looking for bacteria that are um, in healthy breastfed babies intestines. There's a bunch on the market that will be um, infant probiotics, and that's how they decide which ones to put in. So those are a couple things to try if you're convinced it's a lactose problem that really might help. Try a lactose-reduced formula, and you can play around with different ones, and then try to add a probiotic slowly ramping up because that really could help in uh, several different ways to relieve symptoms. And lastly... Because lactase, that enzyme, continues to sort of get better at doing its job and get more active, your baby's going to outgrow this. It doesn't mean they're going to be lactose intolerant. Their intestines will figure it out. So this is a temporary thing. So for all you mamas and papas who are so nervous about feeding a formula that has some kind of other sugar in it, if it solves your problem temporarily and you get some more sleep, that's awesome. Then once your baby's four, five, or six months old, you can try switching back to a formula that's lactose-based, and you may be shocked at how well your baby handles it now. Um, like I said, that newborn time is really hard when all these enzymes are getting started, and babies who are early, who are formula fed, are probably—I <laughs> just took up my notes, so hopefully I don't forget anything—are um, probably at a higher risk for developing these symptoms. So I want to end by thanking all the mothers I've worked with over the years who have totally schooled me to not be so snobby about research and just made me so passionate about sticking to my guns that mothers and fathers are the experts on their own baby, and if you think that lactose is a problem, then hopefully those tips help you to try to address it and we can get rid of some of that gas, bloating, mm, nasty stuff. Um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Uh, oh, Laura, hi! It's so helpful. You're, she is just the sweetest. <laughs> um, and leave a comment if you want me to address a different question in the future. Again, welcome to my bathroom because it's the only room worth showing. I'll end by letting you see Vaughn to say goodbye. There's my notes. There's his toy. Happy New Year, everybody. If you haven't, please watch last week's about how to um, prioritize yourself as a parent, but in a way that can actually get done 20 minutes a week. I love you guys. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.